Grace, peace, mercy to all of you this day. Well, Thanksgiving's over. I hope you had a fabulous feast, but you know what that means, right? Christmas is right around the corner. Who's excited? Anyone? Anyone feeling a little overwhelmed already? You know, at Christmas, I always find myself reminiscing about my childhood toys that I would get, you know, on Christmas morning. I grew up in rural Kansas, and so what we had to do is I would circle what I wanted in the J.C. Penney catalog. Anyone do something similar? Yeah. So I would circle, you know, anything from Hot Wheels to G.I. Joe's. But some of my favorite childhood toys were Transformers. Familiar with Trans? Yeah, they were. They're really, really cool. And so if you don't know who the Transformers were, they were these autonomous robot warriors, and they could transform into like everyday things: vehicles, cars planes, a semi-truck. And then, of course, they could transform back out to warriors. You know, it was the Autobots fighting the, the Decepticons. <laughs> you're, probably, why, you're probably like, why is he talking about Transformers? Well, it's because of their theme song, actually. Uh, there's a lyric in that theme, uh, theme song, and it goes like this. I'll try to get the right notes. Transformers, robots in disguise. Transformers, more than meets the eyes, right? And I think that that particular lyric will come in handy for us today, especially in light of this gospel reading, to, to understand that there is more that meets the eye or maybe more than meets the ears when it comes to it, because that reading is not all that easy on the ears, especially if we were to back up just a, a few verses before where Jesus talks about the destruction of Jerusalem, armies surrounding it, the Israelites fleeing to the mountains, Jesus saying woe to those who are pregnant or nursing infants, saying that there will be a great distress on the the earth, a, a wrath against the people. And all that leads into this morning's part of the gospel story where Jesus talks about the signs and the sun and the moon, the stars, people fainting from fear, foreboding, Right? Not the calmest, most serene pre-Christmas picture to paint. But what I find even more interesting in what Jesus says is that the first people who heard those words, those first followers, well, they were already living 50 or 40 years plus after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. And they may actually have witnessed what Jesus foretold. Because by that time, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. The center of the world for, the, for Jews and the Jewish Christians that had come crashing down. Some may even have personally witnessed that chaos and that destruction. And that Jesus, you know, he spoke about the signs before his return. That these would happen, but Jesus still had not returned 40 plus years later. And to make matters worse, many of those first followers were dying. And yet Jesus' own words were ringing in their ears likely. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Now imagine the confusion, the anxiety, the fear of those first followers. Perhaps many wondering, have we done this all in vain? Have we believed in a lie? Have we been played for fools? Here we are following Jesus, holding to the promises of God, and yet nothing is changing. Our lives are still surrounded by chaos, filled with challenge and catastrophe. Those first followers must have wrestling with such doubts, feeling maybe even that God was absent, that Jesus was wrong, believing that God wasn't delivering on God's promises, which is why I said it's important when it comes to these readings this morning to understand that there's more than going on that meets the eye or the ear. Because for all of his talk about signs and foreboding, what Jesus is really getting at, what Jesus is reaffirming is what the prophet Jeremiah proclaims to the people of God, that God's promise is forever. That even in the midst of hardship and struggles, no, God's power will transform the world. And so these lessons are a reminder to those first followers, to you and me today, that when it comes to God's work in the world, often there is more than meets the eye. 
And when Jesus says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will not, what he's saying is that even in the midst of all of it, chaos, destruction, that the hope and promise of God is present always. The earthly trials and tribulations disciples will experience, well, they are temporary, but their redemption is near because God is with them. God is with us. God's promise is forever. In our own trials and tribulations, amidst the anxieties and catastrophes, it's easier for us to, to feel isolated, to feel alone, to feel overwhelmed. Now, in our our moment, in our time, it's concerns like political divisiveness, racial and economic injustices, uh, fear-mongering aimed at the queer community and at citizens and immigrants. And it's the outright hatred that's being voiced. Jesus' warning signs, they, they ring true for us today. And yet God's promise and hope, well, it's still present. It's found, I think, here in this very room this morning. It's found in God's beloved ones gathered as a community, as one body in Christ. Gathered to be fed and nourished by the good news, by bread and wine, by the care and comfort, supports and authenticity that you have for one another and offer one another. You see, in these acts, God reveals that there is more than meets the eye when it comes to our lives. Because it's through acts like these that we truly experience the transforming power of God's promise. To help us not only endure and survive, but to be able to flourish in the face of tragedy and disaster. And so if you look around, do you see it? And do you hear it? Do you sense it? Do you... Feel the transforming promise of God this day. And these readings, they are reminders that amidst all the worries and fears and all anxieties and catastrophes and and hopeless times that can overwhelm us, that God has already drawn near to us in Jesus. That the end and new beginning has already come in the flesh in the new birth of a child through whom hope is built anew on the promise of God that God makes to us, that God fulfills for us. And so there is more than meets the eye happening here this morning as God, you know, fulfills that promise. It's made and it's kept. It's kept in the the wine and the bread, in the water and the word, in song and prayer, in worship and in community. A promise that God seeks to open our eyes and ears to realize. That through Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, God transforms us. And makes us into transformers ourselves. No, you can't transform into cool vehicles, I know. But you can transform this world. We are transformers who are called to bring hope to others. Transformers who bear God's redeeming love and compassion to a world where suffering is an everyday occurrence. We are transformers, ordinary, everyday people. Transformed by God to carry mercy and grace into a world where too many go hungry. Way too many flee violence and war for the hope of something better. Where shelter for all is lacking. And where hearts are hurting and spirits are distressed. Yet transformed, we know that there is more to this world than meets the eye. We know that Jesus does not leave us or anyone alone, never abandoned. Because God is present here in this world, always transforming you and me. And through us, this world into God's promised reign. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.